Hello everybody, my name is Katie Ewers and I am a professional careers advisor and life coach and I'm here to, today to talk to you about being a clinical psychologist and what it takes to be a clinical psychologist and what you will do as a clinical psychologist and what you need to do to be a clinical psychologist. Right, so these are the psychology specialisms and I'm hoping to cover a lot of these, but I will cover different ones by request. So if there's a particular type that you'd like me to give you some information on, please put me a, me a comment in the description box or send me a message and I will do a video on that particular role. Um, so you have clinical counselling psychologist, for forensic health. There's quite a few types of psychologists and more. These are just like the ones that I picked up first, the ones that I know more about, but there are other specialisms of psychology that you would maybe like to find out information about. If so, let me know. Okay, so clinical psychologists assess and help clients uh, with a range of mental and emotional difficulties. So you'll go to a clinical psychologist if you're suffering from um, low mood, low mental health, maybe depression, anxiety, um, and that's the sort of, um, so clinical psychologist you would seek out. Um, as a clinical psychologist, your aim is to help others reduce negative thoughts um, and emotions that lead to unhealthy behaviours. We think, we feel, we act. And if we can reduce that thinking and feeling or make it more positive, then we're not going to act wrongly. That is the idea. Um, you help people deal with illness and cognitive difficulties and even tragedy that's happened in their life. So it could be long term help or it could be just short term help because of something that had happened in someone's life or it could be long term. So they deal with all kinds of people. Um, so it could be addictive behaviours, um, adjustment to physical illness or injury, um, anxiety, um, challenging behaviours, depression, eating disorders, learning disabilities, mental illness neurological disorders and personal and family relationship problems which again that can be quite a temporary thing so these are either long-term or temporary things they do both so your responsibilities as a clinical psychologist you, you, you your biggest thing is assessing your clients needs their abilities behavior using their skills and ability tests personality tests interviews observation of their behavior so you're always assessing the client looking at what they can do and how they're behaving um you know what their personality is like and watching how they behave and a psychologist with their skills by watching someone how someone behaves and acts they can make quite a, um, a clear and quite a um a good diagnosis of someone's mental condition um, you'll need to work as part of a team, as part of um, a, a team of multi-skilled people um, that advise each other. So you could be working from doctors, uh, uh, health visitors, uh, psych other psychiatrists, occupational health, occupational therapists. So you'll be communicating with a wide range of people that are all linked with the client. Um, you devise and monitor and adapt treatment programs to help the client, like talking therapy, counselling, advice, um, and you 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 bring that forward um, with discussion with your multi-skilled team. So it's not just you that makes the decision. You all make the decision as a team on the best course of action for that client. Um, you therapy, use therapy, counsel, support treatments for issues relating to a range of mental health conditions. So that can be just talking therapy and counseling, CBT, um, NLP. There's loads of different therapies out there. Hypnosis. Um, these are all useful and can be useful treatments for our mental and emotional health problems. Um, evaluate the treatment that you're doing so far and the progress that the client has, has come or how far or not far the client has come. Um, carry out applied research, um, add into the evidence base of the practice in a variety of settings. So they're your main responsibilities if you want to be a clinical psychologist. What's it like? So it's uh, jobs in clinical psychology are around. You know, you don't have to worry about not finding a job in clinical psychology. Um, jobs available in most cities, large towns, but a few opportunities in rural areas, which you'll find with a lot of uh, with a lot of uh, jobs. Um, but normally people in rural areas will use some kind of transport or car or public transport to get to their place of work. 
uh, self-employment or freelance work is possible um, or private and clinical practice but you'd need many years experience before you could go ahead and do something like that um, the work can be challenging as it involves contact with those who are often distressed or sometimes irrational uh, you might encounter situations of potential personal risk to you if the person kicks off you know you might not have much to defend yourself with so that's a risk that you take as a clinical psychologist um, your practice will be observed regularly by other professionals um, there are many different jobs that do the same thing just to make sure that your um, skills and your and your um, abilities are still up to scratch and you're still offering a good service to clients that's a good thing but quite stressful for the psychologist when they're being checked all the time but it happens to us all it happens to careers advisors teachers we all get observed to make sure that we're still uh, performing at a high standard uh, your practice will be observed regularly you'll often need to travel during the working day visiting clients or going to um, construction or you know going to the site where your design is um, going to clients homes god start talking about engineering then um, going to client homes going to maybe the care home they're from or to their home domestic address you're unlikely to spend time away from home overnight or work abroad really um, employers include mostly the nhs um, NHS hospitals employ a lot of clinical psychologists, psychiatric units, local clinics, health centres, uh, community mental health care teams, CAMS, or the Child and Adolescent Mental Health Services, uh, social services, schools, universities, and of course, prisons have a lot of clinical psychologists working within them. Skills needed. Most importantly, you need empathy and that person-centred approach to clients. Um, to understand how that person is feeling and empathize with them not sympathize but to um, sort of have some idea of what it's like to be in that person's shoes um, critical and analytical and work in a self-motivated in motivated self-motivated independent way um, excellent communication and interpersonal skills the ability to recognize your own limitations and respond to difficult situations that means knowing when to call for help when that help is necessary or knowing when to refer a client when their needs are outside your scope of ability um, the ability to collaborate with colleagues from other disciplines a strong understanding of the profession and the role of a clinical psychologist and an awareness of current nhs issues or are there many of those right so a trainee clinical psychologist they're looking at starting their salary at around 30, which is quite good for a graduate salary. And that's band six of the NHS pay rates. Um, so that's quite good for a starting salary, starting graduate salary anyway. So qualified um, in the NHS, you're looking at around 37, band seven, 37, 38,000 a year when you're qualified. As you gain more experience, um, you'll earn between 40 and 60 maybe. Um, and that's bands 8A and 8B, then you could go up to consultant level, um, and that's, you're talking 60, 60,000 plus a year in salary, and then you can progress even further to uh, head of a service, psychology service, then you're looking at 90 and above, up to 100,000 a year. Um, salaries in private hospitals and private practice vary depending on the company. So your working hours, you're looking at round about uh, Monday to Friday, 9 to 5, normal working hours. Occasionally, you may work as part of an on-call system um, covering emergency situations, but most of your work is done 9 to 5, Monday to Friday. Not bad, very um, traditional hours, really. Training. So you need to even start your training as a clinical psychologist, three passes at GCSE grade C or above, or it's not grade C anymore, is it? It's grade four or grade five. Um, so grade four is a low grade C and grade five is a high level C. So three passes at grade four or five or above, uh, which must include maths and English uh, or a minimum of level two skills in communication and numeracy or your functional level twos. Um, in this country, you can go um, away from GCSE and get your functional level two qualifications um, in, commun in English and maths if you so desire. So you will need about um, three A-levels in 
a psychology would be very useful um, a social science subject or english and maths you know they're the most relevant subjects if you want to go and do psychology at university psychology and social science obviously psychology for a good reason and social science which helps you with the wider society that the person lives within gives them a wider scope of knowledge and of course english and maths because um, you do a lot of statistics in psychology and you communicate, you need written communication skills. So English or maths are also good A-levels to do. Um, psychology degree or conversion course needed, accredited by the BPS or uh, British Psychological Society. Um, you'd need a first class or an upper two one. So when you're um, looking at your degree, you must check that this particular degree is accredited by the BPS. If it isn't, it could you could completely do the wrong thing and end up getting a degree that won't get you anywhere. So be very careful. Make sure your degree course is accredited by the British Psychological Society. Very important. And you need to work hard because you need a first or an upper two one and you need to work hard to get grades like that. Um, you'll need at least a year's practical um, work experience. Um, three years of postgraduate training if you want to go towards a doctorate in clinical psychology or equivalent approved by the HCPC. So there is levels of progression all the way through the psychology sector. Um, so you can always progress to higher levels and higher salaries as needed. OK, so will you enjoy being a clinical psychologist? If you've looked, any of my, looked at any of my self-discovery videos, um, you will have looked at motivators, Myers-Briggs, nine intelligences, either or, or all, hopefully. If you um, want to be a clinical psychologist, this is the kind of thing you're going to be looking at. So you want motivators are like the specialist. You know, psychologists that go up to degree level, they want to be a specialist. So that might be one of your motivators. Um, the searcher. So the searcher is about that big picture. It's like making a difference. And the kind of people that want to make a difference are the kind of people that might want to help people on a large scale. So I've added searcher to the motivators. And of course, builder, because you have that opportunity um, with psychology to progress up the levels and earn quite a good salary, which would give you a good material standard of living, which is what the builder is motivated to achieve. Um, Myers-Briggs types, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight types that really, really would do well as a psychologist. The ENFP, uh, INFP, ENFJ, INFJ, you notice they're all, most of them are N's, so they look for possible better possibilities. So there's a lot of intuitives that like um, clinical or other types of psychology. Uh, the intelligence, the Gardner's Nine intelligence, I would put social smart and self smart and maybe even life smart as well as the top three. Um, because social smart, obviously, you're talking to clients, communicating with people all the time. Self smart, it's good to know yourself and know the elements of what makes you you so that you can assess what makes other people them. So you needed a lot of self smart and um, the ability to look at that big picture. OK, the the ability to um, really think about life, you know, and that's what a psychologist is going to be dealing with all the time. So your social smart, your self smart and your life smart are going to be your top three. And of course, you need to communicate. So you need word smart and you need number smart for them statistics. Um, your Gallup strength fiver, your strengths finder, your top one, restorative, doesn't always have to be machines or engineering things that you're restoring or cars. You could be restoring the person. So if you're into restorative, um, it can be an idea, an item, a machine or a person. So a psychologist would be helping, um, you know, in, in effect, restoring the person. So restorative might be a good one. Um, well, it would be. Uh, woo, meeting new people and being good at meeting and um, building rapport with uh, new people. Developer, bringing people from uh, struggling people up to uh, being able to function. So developing someone from difficulty, um, analytical, strategic. You need to know what course of action to take. Of course, communication, input and research, um, learner, connectedness, empathy, relator, uh, belief so you go by your values uh, responsibility because it's a very responsible job you're, you're working with very vulnerable people and of course adaptability things sometimes change uh, customers can be um, 
um, not always behave the way you expect them to behave. Um, and let's leave that there. So Belbin team role, again, there's quite a few that would go to this. I would put team worker in there, but it's not the top one. Um, specialist, possibly, um, monitor evaluator, t implementer, but you're more of a people person if you're a clinical psychologist. Um, but specialist would be high up on there. Maybe monitor, you know, it took me, I had to think about this one, monitor evaluators are the thinkers, um, but to come up with good um, treatment programs for their for their clients, they would need good thinking skills. So I put that in too. There's no reason why a monitor evaluator can't do well. They're not all that happy socially, but maybe one person would be okay. It's just large groups and big social events that the monitor evaluator will really push away from. Um, but yeah, that one, I nearly didn't put that on my list, but I did in the end. Um, but yeah, people orientated roles. Vanya Mumford, um, the reflector and the pragmatist. So the reflector thinks how it thinks back on how things have gone. So a psychologist needs to be a reflective practitioner. They need to think back on their clients, what happened, what could have gone better, and think about how they can improve or not make the same mistake next time or replicate any good things that they've done. So you need to be a reflective practitioner, very important, and a pragmatist, taking the idea that comes from your head and bringing that into reality. So a reflector and a pragmatist, I would say are the top two Honey and Mumford types for clinical psychologists. Well, I hope you've enjoyed my video today on being a clinical psychologist. I am a professional careers advisor and life coach, but I'm new to YouTube or bringing the information to YouTube. So please subscribe to my channel and share to other people that you might think find it useful. If you like my video, please click the thumbs up button and don't forget to click the bell icon. I'll keep you up to date with all my latest uploads. You can email me at katie at careertalents.co.uk or you can go to my website, careertalents.co.uk. And I'm going to put links to my Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn and Instagram in the description box so that you guys can contact me on social media. As ever, guys, you know, when you're looking for a job, when you're looking for a career, only you can make that decision. And it's got to be based on your abilities, your personality, your motivations and your interests. It shouldn't be based on what anyone else said. You're working for many, many years and if you get when you find a job that suits you perfectly you'll be so much happier in your life and you'll you know people that make the mistakes early they have to change direction and retrain you know and it it, it affects them financially in many kinds of ways so making that decision correctly as early as you can is amazing and that's what i aim to do with my channel if you have any questions about the job that i've just spoke about you'd like me to post any other jobs or you have questions about my self discovery series just send me a message or put a note in the description box but remember it's only you counts when you're looking for work see you soon